looks like it's time to circle back to the high quality industrials. That's what I'm wondering if you're eating a classic industrial that manufactures electrical control products, power management systems, hydraulics, truck transmissions, and aerospace systems reported this morning and it blew away the numbers, sending its stock into the stratosphere up 8.37%, one of the best gainers in the S&P. Eaton may be at the mercy of some currency woes like some of the other companies we talked about with major international exposure, but they still deliver a seven cent earnings beat off a buck 20 basis with inline revenues, very strong bookings, and the best organic growth since 2011, plus a nice jump in margins, something investors have been waiting for. Now, Eaton has been a huge long-term winner for us, and I always like the stock when it sports about a 3% yield, as it does right now. One of the reasons why we own it for my charitable trust. So let's take a closer look with Sandy Cutler, the chairman and CEO, to hear more about the quarter and what's next for the company. Mr. Cutler, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. How are you this evening? Well, Sandy, I got to tell you, I'm good because this was the number I have been looking for. Booking strong in electrical and aerospace. These are two incredibly important markets for you. Really, a lot of positive tone, lighting good. It all came together this quarter. Yeah, it really was a great quarter and a great year for us. Your earnings up 18% this quarter, 13% for the full year. As you mentioned, 5% organic growth in the fourth quarter, the strongest since the fourth quarter, 2011. We think a great way to end the year and, and enter 2015 strongly. Well, I want some people to I want people to know which divisions were very exciting, and I felt that LED really shot the shot the proverbial lights out. Can you describe about residential and non-residential and LED and why these are so important for Eaton? Yeah, you know, our, our electrical products, one of our five segments we report, is, is a third of the company. It's 33 percent. And we report lighting as, as one of many products in that segment. You saw bookings up some 4 percent for the entire world, but they were up 7 percent in the United States and led by applications like lighting, where 50 percent of our product is now LED, led by residential, where we're seeing that build on toward what we think will be 1.5 million housing starts out a couple of years from now. Pretty good strength on the industrial side as well. And obviously, all those great benefits of our Cooper integration, they're coming through there as well. So I think a strong feeling. You look in our, our vehicle business where heavy duty trucks is quite busy, as are light vehicles today. Organic growth was, was very strong there again, high single digits, high single digits in aerospace as well. So we've got some really good uh, propellants helping us move ourselves forward right now. Yeah, I mean, people should know the organic growth here was far better than a lot of other companies I talk about quite regularly, just, uh, just kind of passed them all. And one of the things that I thought was very important was that you actually gave us a feel that this is not a one time only or one year only in the discussion that you gave about oil and gas. People were pushing back, saying that oil and gas could be bad for you. You say, I think the piece that many people have missed is that there are a whole bunch of end markets that lower oil and gas actually help. Can you kind of flush that out for us? Because we only heard the uh, grumblings that oil, lower oil is uh, not good. This is the first time I've heard any executive say, no, no, wait you hear what's about to happen in this world. Yeah, and I think most economists would agree that lower oil actually helps to grow GDP. It's, it's just uneven when you get within those pieces. So certainly when you look at our businesses, sales to our oil and gas customers likely to go down this year. But the positive impact for vehicles, a consumer obviously isn't spending as much money at the pump. They've got more money to spend on a vehicle, on a mortgage for a new home. Heavy-duty trucks, obviously a very big operating cost for the fleets is diesel. That's coming down. Aerospace, one of their two big drivers, fuel for airplanes, that's coming down, makes them more profitable. So there are a whole bunch of individual uh, knockoff effects of having more uh, change in people's pocket that will enable them to spend in other areas. So we think it's probably about a net neutral for Eaton. It just changes which of our different businesses uh, does well off of this change. But that's one of the benefits of Eaton. We're a company that's made up of many, many, many end markets. We're taking power solutions across all of them. And that breadth is what we think brings to investor that continuity of earnings through the cycle. Well, I also felt that because of the continuity that you see, you've really stepped up your buyback. Uh, prelude to something bigger or just a new consistent level? Well, we're really pleased. You're right, Jim. We bought back 2% of our shares this last year, about 9.6 million shares, $650 million we spent. We would expect normally to spend about $100 million a year in just buying back to offset options dilution. We said that we're going to get to the middle of this year, about June 30th, and we ought to be in a position to talk about what we're going to do in terms of capital redeployment strategy going forward. Our free cash flow, or our operating cash flow, we expect to be up 15% in 2015 over 14. We're getting through much of the period of time when we were repaying acquisition debt from the Cooper acquisition. So it's likely we're going to be doing one of two things, or maybe a mixture of them, higher buyback back or back into the M&A market if we see attractive opportunities there. But we think it's a really exciting time for shareholders for Eaton. We've got strong earnings trajectory, 
and the cash flow is really coming on now. Well, I got to tell you, this is the most bullish I've heard from you. And I, obviously, this organic growth is extraordinary. It's a very, very big step up. You think it's possible to even top that with this company that you have right now? Well, I think, you know, we, we've given our guidance for what we think will be our, our growth next year as being roughly 3 to 4%. You know, we'll see how, and that's before negative 4 right. on, on Forex. But clearly, we're, we're positioned in a lot of these markets very well. We've continued our spending in R&D. We continue to believe people are interested in sustainability and safety and economy when it comes to fuel. Uh, and those trends are still with us. So we think we've got a, a really good game plan going into 2015. There are a lot of headwinds out there, as everybody's talked about. But there are ways to win in these markets, and we think we've got a really good strategy for doing so. Well, I'm in total agree with you, which is why it remains a good position for charitable trust and could hold on it for a long time. Thank you so much, Sandy Cutler, Chairman CEO of Eaton. Good to see you, sir. Thanks, Jim. Always good to talk with you. Gosh, you heard what he said. Later this year, there could be some very big news in Eaton. They're in great shape to be able to do a lot, whether it be M&A, whether it be dividends, whether it be bigger buyback. This stock is dirt cheap. I would stay with it. Stay with Kramer.